Welcome to my first NFL mock draft of the year, ladies and gentlemen. I am so excited um, to get into these off-season videos. Interesting, interesting things um, to look forward to in the future. Uh, your Kansas City Chiefs just won the Super Bowl, so it's the perfect time to start off the first mock draft of the year. I am going to be doing a no trades mock draft, guys. Um, so many interesting things have happened since the end of the season. Uh, Texans have the second spot after winning their last game. Bears hold the number one spot, and my Arizona Cardinals have the third pick. So it's going to be a very, very interesting uh, mock drafts uh, and a bunch of mock drafts that I'm going to be doing to come. Uh, leading up to the uh, draft in April. Make sure you guys are subscribed uh, if you guys haven't already and like and comment uh, about what you thought about your team selection down below. Let's keep it civil, guys. Just respectful discourse. Uh, no, none of that disrespectful stuff. So uh, let's get right into it, guys. Um, the Chicago Bears with the number one overall pick. I'm going to have him be taking Jalen Carter. Um, I think he's going to be the best defensive uh, player out of this draft class. I mean, the dude's an absolute freak of nature. Um, we all saw that Trey Hill, um, that practice tape against Trey Hill, where he absolutely pushed him back five, six feet. Even with Trey Hill was anchored down, um, the dude couldn't do nothing about it. Jalen Carter is an absolute game wrecker. Um, he absolutely just... Uh, commands double teams because if you put him one on one, he's gonna absolutely destroy the guy you put in front of him. Um, he's I haven't seen a guy um, that scary coming out of the draft as like a Quinn and Williams or maybe even an Aaron Donald uh, back in Pittsburgh, but uh, you know he fell in the draft because of his uh, size issues. Uh, Jalen Carter um, has the size six six two six three I believe um, three hundred and fifteen pounds three hundred and twenty pounds. Jalen Carter is gonna be that player his favorite little uh pass rush move is that little swim move he does which is very effective he can not only just win with uh power he also wins with finesse jalen carter he's gonna come in day one and be an absolute game wrecker for whatever team he, uh, he ends up actually going to in this case your chicago bears moving on to pick number two we have the houston texans and they desperately need a quarterback um if you're a general manager in today's league um you need a quarterback and you need to show the front office that um, you're doing uh, great things to lead your franchise um, to great things in the future. And the best way to do that is to draft a, a good young rookie quarterback. And that's what I think the Texans are going to come do, uh, do actually come draft night. Whether they stick at number two or move up to number one, they're going to take a quarterback. And right here, they're going to have their choice of the three uh, top quarterbacks. And in that opinion, it's going to be Bryce Young for me. I'm going to go ahead and, and have him take Bryce Young out of Alabama. I mean, if this kid was a couple inches taller, 6'2", 6'3", uh, if he was 210, 215 pounds to put on 20 to 30 pounds, this dude would be the consensus, uh, consensus number one overall pick in the draft class. Um, the dude is an absolute uh, um, game manager. Um, he's so poised in the pocket. He has terrific accuracy. He can make every uh, throw uh, needed. He's also a great scrambler. He can um, exchange. Uh, he could uh, extend plays, and could also scramble and get get a first down if you need to. So Bryce Young is going to be an absolute, absolute great uh, pick. He's going to come in day one and start and be able to start right away. And I think he can uh, he can kind of um, progress and um, turn into a top ten quarterback. I definitely think Bryce Young has that uh, capability. So Bryce Young, number two to the Houston Texans. Going on to number three, my Arizona Cardinals. Um, sadly, Jalen Carter is not available. I would have loved for them to take him here. But the second best defensive player in this draft class is definitely going to be Will Anderson Jr., in my opinion. Um, the dude, what can I say, 300 pressures in three seasons at Alabama. Um, he is a bit undersized at 6'2", 6'3", uh, 245 pounds. Um, but the dude is absolutely so freakishly fast. Um, and so athletic coming off the edge. Um, he was kind of uh, misutilized in Alabama. They kind of uh, moved him around on the defensive line, but I think he's best suited as an edge rusher, um, as an outside linebacker coming off the edge. So Will Anderson Jr., um, he wins with pure speed. He can win with power combination with the speed. Um, I think Will Anderson, if you teach him a little bit more uh, pass rush moves, he might not have... Um, the flexibility and kind of the dip as you would kind of look for 
Um, but Will Anderson, I think much like a Michael Parsons or Hassan Reddick can just absolutely win with speed off the edge. And I think you can really uh, mold them into a elite pass rusher. So that's going to be a great pick for my Arizona Cardinals at pick number three. All right. So moving on to pick number four, we have the Indianapolis Colts and I'm going to have him take a quarterback as well. And I think CJ Stroud is a perfect pick for them right here. Um, they've tried the free agent route with quarterbacks, with Matt Ryan, uh, with Carson Wentz. That has not worked out for them whatsoever. Um, they're at the perfect uh, spot right here to take a quarterback at pick number four or trade up. We're going to have them take CJ Stroud here. Um, the dude is probably one of the most accurate quarterback, if not the most accurate quarterback in this draft class. Um, people question his ceiling. Um, I think his ceiling definitely isn't going to be as high as some of these other quarterbacks, but I think he's going to have a high enough ceiling to be a top 10 quarterback. And that's really all you need. If you surround uh, a, quarter, a top 10 quarterback with uh, great talent, you could definitely win a Super Bowl. And CJ Stroud can win you a Super Bowl and he can come in day one and start for you right away and really uh, put the Indianapolis Colts over that hump and have them try to push to a playoff push. So CJ Stroud at pick number four to the Indianapolis Colts. Moving on to pick number five, we have the Seattle Seahawks. Um, you can kind of go a couple ways here. You can take uh, a top defensive lineman or edge rusher right here at pick five, or you can take a quarterback as well. Um, I was kind of almost leaning towards an edge rusher, but I think I'm going to have him go Will Levis here, um, quarterback out of Kentucky. He didn't have a lot of weapons at Kentucky, but I think the tools that he has, the uh, arm strength, He's 6'2", uh, 6'2", 6'3", 230 pounds. An athletic runner uh, can really, really uh, break tackles and pick up big plays and get you big plays uh, with his feet. And also has a huge, huge arm that can really um, make every throw and get the ball to his uh, receivers downfield very quickly with high velocity. Will Levis, I think um, he has that pro-style offense. I believe he has some connections uh, with Seattle's... Um, style of offense that they run as well so will levis can come in uh start day one with uh for you if you decide not to retain geno smith in free agency or you could have him sit as well and develop him even further um and make him into a really really elite quarterback if he ends up um really uh, utilizing those tools and bringing everything together i think will levis can be a very really good quarterback has that elite potential for sure Moving on to pick number six, we have the Detroit Lions, and I'm going to have them take uh, Miles Murphy here, edge out of Clemson. I think that's the perfect player for them to utilize for their defensive line. Uh, he's a player that you can kind of move around there. Uh, he can play inside. He can play in the outside. Miles Murphy, he has incredible raw strength, 6'5", uh, 6'6", six, uh, six, six, 270 pounds. The dude has incredible length. And I've seen clips of this guy just absolutely uh, knocking uh, offensive linemen on their butt, on their ass. Miles Murphy is an incredible raw talent. But I think if you teach him, if you teach him a few uh, pass rushing moves as well, and he can further develop, he has elite potential for sure. Uh, Miles Murphy, definitely a top five, even top three pick in other draft classes. I think he falls here to num uh, pick number six and you get a steal. All right, moving on to pick number seven, we have the Las Vegas Raiders, and they have to go quarterback here, in my opinion. Um, I think that benching Derek Carr pretty much signaled that. Um, I've seen Derek Carr's recent interview as well, kind of budding jokes about his relationship with the Raiders. So I think they're going to have to replace him here, um, and they're going to have to reach on a guy... Uh, like Anthony Richardson. The deal with Anthony Richardson is he probably has the highest ceiling out of all the quarterbacks in this draft class for sure, but also probably probably has one of the lowest floors as well. Anthony Richardson has incredibly bad percentage issues and accuracy issues, but this dude has an incredibly big um, frame, um, height, 6'2", um, 6'4", 240 pounds, 235 pounds, and this dude is uber athletic. He can make you miss. He has wiggles. He has Cam Newton-esque athleticism, and he has a huge, huge arm as well. Uh, maybe not as big as Cam Newton's arm. Um, I don't think so, um, at least, but Anthony Richardson has 
that kind of Cam Newton comparison, a guy you can kind of mold if you can fix his mechanics. And um, I think that will pretty much fix a lot of his accuracy issues. And you can kind of just work with them, um, have him develop as an NFL quarterback. And I think this can end up being a huge, huge um, home run hit. I mean, everyone kind of complained with Josh Allen went number six. I, everyone thought that was a reach. Uh, but Josh Allen kind of ended up being becoming a top three elite quarterback. So that kind of worked out for them. So Anthony Richardson could be the same thing for the Oakland Raiders. I think that's definitely worth taking um, if I'm the Raiders. So Anthony Richardson at pick number seven. Moving on to pick number eight, we have the Atlanta Falcons. And I think it's pretty easy here. I think you take the last remaining top edge rusher in this draft class, and that's going to be Tyree Wilson, at least a guy that I'm comfortable worth taking in the top 10. Uh, Tyree Wilson is an absolute, absolute monster off the edge. He's so, so uh, athletic, much like a Miles Murphy, but a lot quicker in space. I feel like I think he's a lot quicker. Uh, Miles Murphy has a lot more strength. They're both similar in terms of size. I think Tyree Wilson's about an inch taller, 6'6", 275. Uh, Tyree Wilson um, has been getting a lot of comparisons to last year's number one overall pick. Um, so Tyree Wilson, I think, has that potential to be a monster. Um, but I feel like Miles Murphy is uh, much more like last year's number one overall pick. I think Tyree Wilson has a lot more upside in terms of being a pure pass rusher. I think if you teach him a few more moves, as a lot of these guys have a lot of raw talents and they don't have a lot of moves, um, to display. Um, but I think Tyree Wilson can be a game changer and he's put up the stats. He has the pressures. He has the sacks at Texas tech. Um, going to be a great pick for the Atlanta Falcons there at pick number eight. So moving on to pick number nine, we have the Carolina Panthers, um, and they cannot take a quarterback here as there's not quarterback worth taking. They desperately need one, but Sam Darnold is good enough for now. So, now you need a, a, an identity on offense, and what better to uh, have an identity than a top top, uh, a top five running back day one that can come in like Bijan Robinson out of Texas. Uh, the dude is crazy, crazy athletic, super fast. His stop and uh, stop and go ability is second to none. Um, this dude can run you over. He can run around you. He can make you miss. He can catch the ball. B. John Robinson really is everything. And I think um, he gives the Carolina Panthers um, an instant juice and makes them a, a playoff contender for sure. Um, so B. John Robinson at pick number nine, I think that's pretty much the highest B. John can go. So going on to pick number 10, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. And um, so they just lost the Super Bowl. Um, they could definitely take a corner here. Or they can take someone in the defensive line. They uh, they have um, a couple of guys that are going to be in free agency, um, like Javon Hargraf and Fletcher Cox is not getting any younger as well. Um, so I like the idea of kind of uh, taking a guy like Brian Brzee. You could also take a corner here, though. But they also have a pick later, and there's a lot of great corners in this draft class, so they could definitely take someone um, during that time. So... You know what? I'm just going to have him take the better overall player, in my opinion. I almost had him take Brian Brzee, but I'm just going to have him go with Joey Porter Jr. here. Um, you know, we, everybody knows his Hall of Fame father, uh, Joey, Porter, Joey Porter Sr. that played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, an edge rusher. Joey Porter here is a cornerback, but much like his dad, he's an absolute game changer. Uh, this dude has been an absolute shutdown corner for Penn State. Uh, he's went up against uh, great matchups. He's he's went up against Marvin um, Harrison Jr. at Ohio State. I've seen that clip. Uh, he's held his own. Uh, this guy is a guy that can come in and really fix your problems that you kind of had at the Super Bowl uh, with the receivers. The Ch Kansas City Chiefs were kind of throwing all over the, the Eagles, and they came back and snagged a ring from their franchise. So I think Joey Porter, um, they might lose James Bradbury in free agency, and he's the one that gave up that huge, huge play uh, to uh, Juju. So Joey Porter, I think, gives you a better chance at defending some of these elite wide receivers. Um, or not even just elite wide receivers, but just um, gives you a better um, chance at defending the pass for sure. Um, Joey Porter Jr. at pick number 10 for the Philadelphia Eagles. So... Moving on to pick number 11, we have the Tennessee Titans. 
I think they have to go offensive line here. Um, let's take a look at some of the offensive linemen. You have Paris Johnson Jr., who I think is going to be probably the best offensive lineman here in terms of a guy who um, really has it all, um, has that guard and tackle um, ability, has the size, and has that pass and, and uh, run um, run blocking ability as well. Um, you can go with a guy like Peter Scaronsi here. Um, Dewan Jones has played very, very good. Um, Darnell Wright has played great in the Senior Bowl. Both of these guys right here um, are pretty much have jumped up into the first round. I think you go with a guy like Paris Johnson Jr. I think he's a top uh, offensive lineman here. And I think that's going to be a perfect pickup for the Tennessee Titans here at pick number 11. Uh, so go, moving on to pick number 12, we have the Houston Texans. You took a quarterback in Bryce Young at pick number two. Why not give him a shiny new receiver? And I think the best receiver in this draft class is going to be Jordan Addison. Uh, this dude is very much like um, the guy who they might end up trading pretty soon in Brandon Cook. He's a game changer. Um, he can win in inter intermediate routes. He can win uh, down the field as well. Uh, he's a very, very uh, fast guy with quick uh, change in direction. Jordan Addison, he can win with sweeps. He can win with uh, receiver screens. Uh, he can run routes. He has great hands. I think he's the best balanced wide receiver in this draft class and the best one overall. So perfect for the Houston Texans to take him here at pick number 12. So moving on to pick number 13, we have the New York Jets. And Zach Wilson is not the uh not the um quarterback that they thought they had so i desperately think that they're going to be looking for another quarterback in the future um or i definitely think uh at least not desperately but i definitely think and i think they're going to just go with an offensive lineman here i mean i know mckay beckton has had some injury issues and i think a guy that they could end up taking here would be peter scronzi as he has the uh probably the most versatility on the offensive line um but he has a little bit of anchoring issues he doesn't have the elite strength that you might be looking for in an offensive lineman and a guy who i've been really impressed in especially in this in the senior bowl um i'm really impressed with this tape as well is darnell wright uh tackle out of tennessee this dude has the size uh 320 to 330 pound man six six foot six uh, the dude can absolutely anchor down. Um, he has a lot of pass uh, blocking moves. Um, I've seen him pull like the little snatch block he does where he just pulls uh, his defender uh, down and he just uh, sits on top of him. I mean, this dude has the uh, moves that you look for. And uh, he's a guy that I think the, the Jets desperately need. Uh, so I'm going to go with and uh, pick Darnell right here um, at pick number 13 for the New York Jets. Um, a second round guy probably before the Senior Bowl. And now definitely solidified himself in the first round. So moving on to pick number 14, we have the New England Patriots. And I think they can definitely go a lot of ways here. They could go defense. And I think I'm going to have them take Brian Brissy, uh defensive tackle out of Clemson. Um, I think he's going to be best suited uh, in the interior. He can play a little bit on the outside, uh, but at 6'5", 300 pounds, um, the kid has had some struggles with injuries. He's had some family issues as well uh, in terms of things going on with that. Um, but Brian Brissy, I think he brings it all together. He's a great character kid, um, and he's going to be a great guy that Bill Belichick can um, work with and discipline him and really uh, mold him into a great uh, defensive lineman. So I think you add on to that defense, uh, and I think you take Brian Brissy here at pick number 14 for the New England Patriots. So moving on to pick number 15, we have the Green Bay Packers. Um, Aaron Rodgers might not be playing for them next season. He might end up getting traded um, and they might end up going with Jordan Love. So I think you can definitely take an offensive lineman here. Um, I really... I'm, I almost wanted to go with Peter Scronsi, and I might, but I really love Dewan Jones. Um, it's really a tough, jo uh, tough choice here. Dewan Jones just ha uh, just has an absolute uh, monstrous uh, frame that can really just erase an edge off of a play. 
Uh, but Peter Scronsy has that versatility that I think that the Green Bay Packers can use. And I'm just going to go ahead and have him take Peter Scronsy for that versatility. Um, a player out of Northwestern here um, has the highest PFF grade, I think, out of all the offensive tackles. Um, probably lacks a little bit of strength. Um, lacks a little bit of anchoring down, uh, anchor ability um, in terms of trying to anchor down. Um, but I think that's going to be a great pick here and, and overall great value uh, for the Packers. So moving on to pick number 16, we have the Washington Redskins or the Washington Commanders, uh, at least. I'm still not used to saying Commanders, uh, but the Washington Commanders, I think they take a top corner here. Um, Joey Porter is not available anymore, but they can take the second best corner in this draft class. And I think that's either going to be Christian Gonzalez, Devon Witherspoon, and many people might not agree with this as well, but I think I still very high on Kelly Ringo. I think he's going to tear it up in the combine and he's going to really uh, be solidified as a first round win, uh, first round draft choice when the combine does come. But until then, I think I really much like Devon Witherspoon, but Christian Gonzalez, I think he has more of the upside in, tor- in terms of a, a man corner. Um, so Christian Gonzalez um, has a little bit of that higher coverage overall um, upside. So I'm going to go ahead and take him for the Washington Redskins here. Um, a guy that can just come in and guard the number one receiver um, week in, week out. Uh, Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon, 6'2", long arms. I think he can develop into an elite corner. So I'll take him here at pick number 16 for the Washington Commanders. So moving on to pick number 17, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think they also desperately need a corner uh, very badly. And you have Devon Witherspoon here at pick number 17. Fell all the way to you. And I think this guy is an absolute dog at the cornerback position. Excuse me, an absolute dog at the cornerback position. Um, this kid absolutely destroys um receiver screens short receiver intermediate routes he just comes down flying and absolutely puts a lick on these uh receivers so devon witherspoon has the quick um puts his foot in the ground and really plants and just bursts uh to his um receiver whether it's a short intermediate route or um defending on a route i think devon witherspoon has the uh, capabilities to be a game changer, uh, game changer here for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I think he's going to fit perfect with that whole kind of culture. Um, I think the Mike uh, Mike Tomlin is pretty much a really tough coach, and I think he's going to love Devon Witherspoon if he falls to them here at pick number seventeen. Uh, so moving on to pick number eighteen, we have the Detroit Lions, and they went ahead and took Miles Murphy in round one, or with the sixth pick. I'm sorry. So with the 18th pick, I think they can definitely go with a corner here. And I think you have to take Kelly Ringo um, after three cornerbacks are already off the board. Um, go ahead and take your top corner in Kelly Ringo, a guy that's six foot two, um, 210 pounds, can absolutely fly. I think this is a guy that they're desperately missing. And that's going to be a great pick, uh, pick for them here. Um, he's gone up against great competition. You've seen him uh, struggle a little bit. But I think um, with his size combina- combination with his speed, I think it's just too much tools uh, to pass up on. Um, and I think Kelly Ringo is going to end up being an elite corner in the in the NFL. So I really do. So it's going to be a great player for them at here at uh, pick number 18. So moving on to pick number 19, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And let's see who's available here. Um, I think they desperately need to get another offensive lineman as well um they could go with defense um get another edge rusher let's see who's oh okay i'm gonna go ahead and have him take dewan jones offensive tackle out of ohio state um i almost went uh broderick jones but i think dewan jones is an absolute absolute game changer with his arm length his six foot eight 350 pound frame his ability to move with, with that size he can absolutely just win by extending his arms and just absolute erasing an edge rusher out of a play i think this is a guy that the bucks can utilize and 
uh, further uh, solidify that uh, Bucks offensive line, whether Tom Brady decides to return or not, or uh, for the future uh, signal caller at the quarterback position for the Buccaneers. So going on to pick number 20, we have the Seattle Seahawks. And um, you went with Will Levis at pick number five. I think you could definitely go with defense here. Let's see who's available on defense. Hmm. Uh, I almost want to go with Lucas Van Ness um, out of Iowa, but I think I'm going to go with Kalijah Clancy, um, defensive tackle out of Pittsburgh. Um, we've heard Aaron Donald comparisons um, with uh, the top defensive tackle in uh, Jalen Carter, but I think Elijah Clancy is uh, much closer in terms of his size. At six foot, 280 pounds, Elijah Clancy uh, definitely has the same frame as Aaron Donald and pos- uh, possesses athletic um, um, skill set and quickness to win uh, with speed as well as power. Elijah Clancy is going to be a game wrecker, and I think uh, Seattle Seahawks can desperately use some interior um, defensive pass rush. So Kalijah Clancy is going to be a perfect pick uh, for the Seattle Seahawks here at pick number 20. So moving on to pick number 21, we have the um, Los Angeles Chargers. And I think they're going to be moving away from Keenan Allen. So that's going to um, leave a big hole at wide receiver. I mean, you have Justin Herbert as your quarterback. You definitely want to be utilizing Justin Herbert's capabilities. So if you're going to be moving away from Keenan Allen, I think they're going to need a receiver. Quinton Johnson um, is very much like a receiver they already have in Mike Williams, kind of a deep threat. So I think they're going to shy away from him. And I think they're going to go with Zay Flowers, um, wide receiver out of Boston College. Um, The dude is an absolute, absolute uh, speed demon. Um, This guy is pretty much like a Jalen Water and Tyree Kill, where he can change direction and keep up his speed um, um, moving laterally, not just um, moving down the field. So Zay, J- Zay Flowers is a guy I feel like that can be a, a playmaker for the Los Angeles Chargers. And I think it's going to be a great pick. I've seen Zay Flowers mocked here at 21 uh, a lot for them and for a good reason. He's just an absolute great fit for them. Um, so Zay Flowers uh, for the Chargers here at pick number 21. So moving on to pick number 22, we have the Baltimore Ravens. And I think they have to go with a receiver here as well. Um, there's receivers left on the board. Um, I think they need someone who's gonna be, who's they're gonna be able to target a lot, who's gonna be able to do a lot of things. And I think that one that's gonna be a player like Jackson Smith and Jigba. He had the injury concerns, but just a year ago before the injuries, Jackson Smith and Jigba was an absolute game changer for Ohio State. Um, this dude is a, a really good. Um, um, route runner he could also um catch the ball underneath and um extend the plays use his legs and pick up more yards he's a great player um a great balanced receiver that can do a lot of things and he's going to be a great player here for the baltimore ravens they desperately have been searching for a number one receiver and i think this is going to be the perfect player for them here at pick number 22. so moving on to pick number 23 we have the minnesota vikings um i think they have a glaring need at corner and I'm going to take, go ahead and take Emmanuel Forbes, a guy who I've heard uh, been described as a Raptor, which seeing him play, it's pretty funny because that's kind of like a perfect comparison. Uh, he's a big strider. He's kind of skinny, but he's very long and lengthy. He's tall and he's an absolute attacker at the football. Um, this dude has had the most pick sixes out of all corners um, this past year. And the dude had an insane amount of turnovers and interceptions Emmanuel Forbes is an absolute game changer and a guy that the Minnesota Vikings desperately need they have Patrick Peterson he's a lot he's getting really old he's way past his prime uh they they need a guy that's going to come in be a cornerback one um it's going to be a game changer I think Emmanuel Forbes is that pick here at pick number 23 for the Minnesota Vikings 
So moving on to pick number 24, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars. And Trevor Lawrence has had a successful season with the Jaguars. Uh, probably the best um, Jacksonville Jaguars season in a very, very long time. Um, I think they desperately need another wide receiver uh, to pair with Christian Kirk. And I think Quinton Johnson is going to be that guy out of TCU. Um, that deep threat, 6'4", 210 pounds, has the speed. Um, and that's a perfect complement to Christian Kirk. And Trevor Lawrence is definitely going to be a perfect uh, fit with him. Uh, Quinton Johnson here at pick number 24 for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So moving on to pick number 25, we have the New York Giants. Um, you could go with another offensive lineman. Let's see who we, who we have available. You know what? I think you need interior offensive linemen really bad. You could go with a receiver here. Um, but I love the pick of Osiris Torrance out of Florida. Um, he played very, very, very well this past season for them. Um, I've seen the tape against Jalen Carter, and he fared up very, very well. So if he's going to be doing that against uh, top defensive linemen in the NFL, I de definitely think he's worth taking here. Um, probably a tw uh, top 20 player. So getting him here at, tw uh, at the 25th spot is definitely good value for the New York Giants. So I think that's going to be a perfect fit for them and definitely fills a need that they have. Uh, moving on to pick number 26, we have the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I think you need to go with another weapon here after a lot of receivers have uh, been taken. Um, I think you're going to take the last receiver that I think is worthy of going in the first round, in my opinion, which is Josh Downs um, receiver out of North Carolina. Um, this dude is a terrific player out of the slot, can play a bit on the outside, but played most of his snaps on the slot and is probably going to be end up being a slot player, which the Cowboys uh, definitely need. Uh, they haven't had a great slot player since Cole Beasley, so Josh Downs can come in and be another weapon that Dak Prescott can utilize, and that was probably their biggest problem in the playoffs. So Josh Downs, um, a player here at pick number 26. So moving on to pick number 27, we have the Buffalo Bills. And I think one of their main issues is they don't really have a run game outside of Josh Allen. So why not take a, a game changer here in Jamar Gibbs? Uh, reminds me a lot, a lot like um, Kamara. So I think Jamar Gibbs um, comes in here and absolutely plays lights out. He's going to be an offensive uh, um, um, offensive rookie of the year candidate for sure. Um, there's going to be a lot of offensive rookie of the year candidates. This is a great draft class, and I think Jamar Gibbs has um, that potential to be an elite running back in the next level and really take that Buffalo Bills offense to the next level, give him another um dynamic dynamic way to uh kill a defense so um jamar gibbs there at pick number 27 to the buffalo bills buffalo bills moving on to pick number 28 we have the cincinnati Bengals. um they're probably going to be trading away t higgins um i don't think there's a receiver worth uh, replacing him here at pick number 28 um they also though could get an offensive lineman um to protect Joe Burrow, and I think that's who they're going to end up taking here. Um, so Broderick Jones, I think, is going to be a great player. Um, they uh, signed a couple guys. Um, uh, they signed a guy this offseason, um, and they have Jonah Williams, but I think Broderick Jones is going to further solidify their right tackle position, or if you want to have him play left tackle, I think he can do both. And Broderick Jones is a great player and terrific value here at pick number 28. So going on to pick number 29, we have the New Orleans Saints. And they could definitely go a lot of ways here. Uh, they need corner. They need someone uh, on that defensive line as well. Let's see who's available. Hmm. Uh, let's see who we got to edge. You know what? I love Lucas Van Ness, and I think... Um, He's fallen too much uh, for my comfort. And pick number 29, Lucas Van Ness. I think he's a guy that the Saints could definitely utilize on that defense. 
and have another pass rusher, a guy who can stop the run, who can win with absolute freak power, uh, Lucas Van Nex. Uh, you could develop him to a great to be a great uh, player off the edge. So going on to pick number thirty, um, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. They lost the Super Bowl. Um, this is their second pick in the first round, though, which is pretty crazy to say. Joey Porter was the pick at number ten. At number ten, uh, I think they could definitely use another guy on the defense. Um, let's see who they can take here. You know what? They didn't really go after the quarterback as much um, at all. Actually, they had zero sacks in the Super Bowl. So I think you could probably take a guy here. Um, so I want to go with defensive tackle. Uh, you know what? I really like Aditamiwa. Adibuwari. I don't really know how to say his name. Adibawar. Adibawari. Um, out of Northwestern. Northwest. Northwestern. Um, he's a terrific, terrific player. Um, absolutely can win with strength. I mean, I saw him at the Senior Bowl. Absolutely destroy Jarrett Patterson. Uh, Jarrett Patterson is probably going to be a, a fourth round player or a late third round player because of him. Um, absolute, absolute uh, monster um, bull rush that he possesses so i think he's going to be an excellent player here a guy that can um play uh has the versatility to play off the edge or play inside and can help the philadelphia eagles uh pass rush definitely so moving on to pick number 31 the last pick we have the kansas city chiefs and i think they can go with a corner here um they had uh philadelphia eagles kind of pass a lot on them a little bit more than i kind of would like um they could go with an edge rusher here as well and actually uh, actually i'm gonna have him go with nolan smith here uh nolan smith i think he's a terrific terrific uh, edge rusher coming off the edge for georgia um and he's very much undersized but i think he can win with speed um he's kind of like a will anderson um not as um, effective as well understand doesn't possess the strength that he does for sure but i think nolan smith has um the um, juice to be a great um edge rusher that can go after the quarterback and put him um, at the edge so uh, nolan smith with the last pick at 31 to the kansas city chiefs um, no pick 32 as the dolphins um do not have that pick no more let me know what you guys thought in the comment section down below guys uh please keep it respectful like i said leave a like as it would uh, tremendously help me um get my videos out there to more people for sure and please make sure to subscribe if you want to see more mock drafts or free agency or offseason uh, videos in the future so i'm definitely going to be dishing out some great content guys um so peace out guys um have a blessed day and i'm out